Hey, my name is Willie Minix. I am the author of the Mandolin Dead Man's Tuning series of books. And lately I've been kind of on this health kick, exercising every morning, uh, going on a diet, trying to lose some weight. So I thought, well, I want to get things squared away and get back on target. And um, so I started exercising again. And one of the things that I started to do was I always was really good at nunchucks when I was younger. And I like doing that, but one of the things that I wanted to learn how to do was how to use double swords. And um, I found a guy's videos named Wampire, and another guy named um, Paul Ingram, who's uh, Wampire, I think, is in Texas, and Paul Ingram, I think, is in Chicago. And so if you're in those areas, you should look them up and, and go take some lessons from them. But they do a martial art called a screma, and a screma or Kali or Arnis, it goes by a couple different names. But um, it's, it's kind of like a training exercise with sticks that teaches you how to use swords. And one of the things that I have been thinking of is the idea of rhythm with the sword training. And um, something that I haven't really seen a whole lot about. And a lot of martial artists are really good martial artists and they understand the rhythm of, of their fighting. But one of the things that I feel is kind of important is if you're going into a fight, you should be the one in control of the fight. And I feel that in a lot of ways, martial arts or fighting systems are a lot like being in a band. And in a band, everybody doesn't get to do whatever they want. There's usually one person kind of setting the pace and everybody's sort of following that person. And I think the same thing needs to happen in a fight. If you're in a fight and the rhythm's changing and this guy's got his rhythm going and then he throws you off and you've got your rhythm, you could lose. You want to be the one in control of the beat of that fight all the time and you want to be the one to call the shots and change things up um, so that you don't get taken down. So I want to talk about rhythm, and I just did a video that you can check out on um, how on rhythmic techniques and variations, and I want to add one little thing. Um, I talked about using a song like All You Need Is Love by the Beatles uh, because it has multi-key changes. It changes uh, from 4-4 from four, four time to 3-4 time in a weird sequence over and over and over throughout the song. There are a lot of songs out there that have different rhythmic shifts in them and also there are weird rhythms that a lot of people aren't used to so if you can kind of just get used to that um, but some songs I thought might be useful for you would be like well all you need is love is one of them I hung my head by sting is a very interesting time signature that a lot of people aren't really used to don't get the other versions of I hung my head although they're okay you want stings version because it's in the strange uh, time signature you might want to check out Irish rhythms. You might want to t take a class in Bowron playing and learn how to play the, uh, the Irish frame drum and learn all of the different jigs and slip jigs and horn pipes and all the different types of beats that they use. Maybe take a class in African drumming. Those things will teach you uh, differences, different things about rhythm that you're not necessarily going to learn on the mat fighting with somebody, especially if you fight with people that are that are just friends of yours, because you probably all maybe like a lot of the same kind of stuff, so you may not be challenging each other enough to reach out there and get different rhythms that you're not used to. So today I want to talk about notation, and I want to talk about understanding the uh, different types of rhythm that there is. Now the first basic beat is just one, two one two and that's your walking beat you know and that's the heartbeat of your mom when you were in the womb that's just what you hear every single day of your life now you can sub that into one two three four or one two three four one two three four that's a four four time so we're going from two to four four now when you elongate notes let's say we're in four four time and the beat is one two, three, four, and the quarter note gets the beat, which I guess I should explain that because you may not be a mus understand musical terminology. When you see a time signature, it might say something like four, four. The top note designates how many beats there are in each measure, and the measures divide up the sheet music. The bottom note tells you which, beat, which note gets the beat. So if it's 
a two at the bottom, that's a half note. If it's a one, that's a whole note. If it's a four, that's a quarter note. Do you see where I'm going with this? If it's an eight, it's an eighth note. If it's a sixteenth, it's a sixteenth note. And there are different types of notes, and hopefully I'll be popping these up on the screen for you. A whole note gets four counts. One, two, three, four. So